three-point highest field goal percentage one year. He shot over 40%. He was a part of a 27-game winning streak in Miami. Skip, you remember he had a he had a a, 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 a zero, I think it was like six games, where he scored at least 30 and shot 60% from the floor. And then when he broke the streak, it was against the uh, OKC. He had dropped 39, and he tried a 30-foot 30, a 30 three with, like, under a minute to drop him at 58%. Because he, so he had it, could have uh, continued it on. Um, and then in Boston. Skip, you remember what he did in, in, in Boston when that, that game six, when he dropped 45 and, what, 45 and 15. Um, so for me, and, it, it, and we're, it's kind of like Tom Brady. You take Tom Brady's career in seven-year increment, Skip, and any way you look at it, he's a Hall of Famer. He's arguably a top... In any seven-year increment of Tom Brady's career, no matter how you look at it, Skip, he's a top five quarterback. I think LeBron James, you look at it, you split it up over five years, he's arguably one of the five, he's one of the five best players to ever play the game in any five-year increment that you look at it. So for me, I'm gonna take the Miami LeBron because I think that was he's at the peak of his offensive and defensive powers. <sighs> okay. So for those billions of blind witnesses out there. I'm going to remind everyone, I'm now forced to respond to what you just said about your man, LeBron James. Mm -hmm. So I'm not cheap-shotting LeBron. I'm only responding to the case you just made. Right. For the record. Okay, so if I'm doing Miami LeBron, the problem with LeBron for me is he does put up good slash numbers, as, as you say, you know, the what are they, like 20, 20 yeah, everywhere basically. he's goes, yes. it's like 27, 28, 7, 7, and 7. Okay. So he is a model of consistency, but many times that consistency camouflages what really happened. So for me, what really happened to Miami LeBron was, obviously in 2011, that was an epic fail in the finals against yeah. Dallas. So I got to include that yes. in the body of work in Miami because yes. – I have never seen a superstar melt down the way LeBron did in games four, five, and six of that series when he averaged 15, eight, and eight. 15, eight, and eight. Shot only 44% from the field, which is unlike him. Two of 12 from three, which is not shocking. That was 17%. Four of 10 from the free throw line in those three games. That's 40%, obviously. Averaged five turnovers per game in four, five, and six. He was also a minus 41 and plus minus in those three games. Mm -hmm. It was a collapse. And even you agreed that was a collapse. So that's on the record. Right. So he comes back the next year to his credit against the baby thunder. It's Durant, Westbrook, and Harden in their first finals trying to figure it out. They win game one. LeBron was instrumental in surviving game two to get the series back to Miami tied one-to-one. -one. But I'm going to remind everybody, Shane Battier in game two at Oklahoma City was lights out because he shot the lights out. He made five of seven threes in that game, and it just felt like every time he looked up, there was another rainbow bomb from Shane Battier that turned the tide. LeBron did make was it one or two, two free throws down the stretch, which was many times. Oh, game two, yeah, he made yeah. both free throws. He, he made both three free throws, and I'm going to give you that. But Shane Battier was crucial in game two, yeah. which, which led to game three, which was Dwayne's one big game in the series. When he went 25 to LeBron's 29, he went 25, 7, and 7, was Dwayne in game three. And all of a sudden, the tide is turning completely against the baby thunder. And then game four was the Mario Chalmers game because he scores 25, but he scored 12 in the fourth quarter. He took over in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden, it's three games to one heat. Okay. And then we get to the closeout game, which was only game five, and Mike Miller goes berserk. I mean, I, I, I've never seen anything like that from Mike Miller because he made seven of eight three-point shots and scored 23 points in the game. But seven of eight threes? So you're getting huge help from unlikely places, which you can always argue, okay, that, that happens. But he got it right on time when he needed it. But you make it seem like LeBron didn't cut. LeBron was the leading scorer. He averaged 28 mm -hmm. in that series. Okay. So you get so you gave me one game Shane Battier. You gave me one game D-Way. You gave me well, one game Mike Miller. Game. But what about LeBron was a model of consistency throughout? He led them in scoring. Okay, I'll give you that. But what did he say live on ABC 
at the end of that game? Yes. It's about damn yes. time. Well, yes. It was about damn time. Okay. But he did that. Yes. Which brought us to 2013, which brought us to game six, my most painful moment of ever watching any game, uh, any place in any sport, because down the stretch, my team with 23 seconds left had a five-point lead, courtesy of a LeBron James, who, if we could see these, please, with 39.9 seconds left, down the stretch of game six, should have been the closeout game for my Spurs, LeBron turns it over because Kawhi Leonard took it away from him. But these are unforced errors, just shocking. Whoops, whoops, what are you doing, LeBron? Okay, so that's the first turnover. And then there's the second turnover that Manu steals from him. So with 39.9 and 28.2 seconds left, LeBron James turned it over in a crucial closeout game and basically said, here's Spurs, here's Spurs. Yes. You guys should close the deal, But they right? didn't go skip. Okay. Then LeBron has a three to clear the decks, to save the day, to tie the game and send it to overtime, and he LeBricked it. He was long with it. And for some reason, Tim Duncan was sitting next to Pop on the bench. I'll never understand that one. But Chris Bosh goes and takes the long rebound, kicks it to Ray Allen in the corner, and we know what happened. Skip. Ray Allen did save Skip. LeBron's legs. Skip. Think about what you're doing. I'm taking a four-year span, and I'm talking about LeBron did this, this, and this. You're taking individual games. Mm -hmm. So you're not look. You haven't looked at what finals games. Okay, oh finals games. In, in 2014, you will say, "Well, look at LeBron. LeBron James in 2014, he averaged 28. He shot 57 percent from the floor. He shot 52. LeBron James in the 2014 finals averaged one fewer point per game than what D Wade and Chris Bosh averaged together." But you blame that on LeBron. I, I took a series. I, what I did is I took a four-year increment in which LeBron played at Miami. And you look at the numbers, and I'm saying this was when he was at his peak. He was at his apex because he could literally sit in the chair for 48 minutes and guard anybody, be it Tony Parker, be it uh, 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 Derrick Rose, or he could jump out there and deal with Ka uh, Ka uh, KD. No matter who it was, he could deal with them. And he, the efficiency in which he played the game with. But you know what you talk about? Let's talk about one series. Not the whole year. Let's talk about one series. Okay, let's talk about game six. Well, game six in 2013, Skip, he scored 16 points in the fourth. You love, you criticize Steph because he only had two points in the fourth. LeBron had 16, had two assists. Yes, yeah, Skip, turnovers are a part of the game. And even when he plays well, you go find somebody that had five points in the fourth quarter or somebody that had 10 points. You say, well, that's mm. it right there. That's why they won. Mm. Give the, if you want to say, well, well, I think the second time in Cleveland or I think L.A. or I think the first time, okay, fine. But you take an individual, you take one series or you take one game to try to dispel four years. Okay, well, I appreciate you bringing up 2014 because I'm going to continue to dispel Miami LeBron. I dare anybody to go put in the tape and watch the tape of game three and four. The series is tied one all going back to LeBron's house in Miami, American Airlines Arena. I was shocked because LeBron wasn't really into it. I I'm not saying he was completely out of it, but it was just weird, LeBron. Well, where are those guys at? Now, now, see, now, see, the other time, now, you told me about Mike Miller. You told me about Rio. You told me about D-Wade. So where'd they go? Him. Nobody well, saved where'd him. they go? Would you believe oh. in those two games, in three and four, LeBron did average 25-7 and only five assists, so those fell off. He also averaged five turnovers in each of the... He had ten total turnovers in two games. It's just not good enough because his final plus-minus, his combined plus-minus for those two games that the... The Miami Heat blew at home to the Spurs. LeBron was a minus 42 in those two games. Well, Skip, they minus got beat. They 42. got beat by like 25 wow. and 30. Okay, and so after they got torched in Game Five back in San Antonio, which became shockingly the closeout game of that series, LeBron James and company had lost that Finals by a record Finals margin. Yes. Okay, so that goes on your resume. Yes. In Miami. Which brings me to my answer to Jen's question, which is the greatest I ever saw LeBron was 2015, his first year back in Cleveland against Golden State the first time they faced him in the finals. Because in those three games, I've told you again and again, 
That was the epitome of LeBron's but skip, greatness. You skip. I'm taking an increment. You're taking a series. We're not. We're, we're not supposed to take the series. Which LeBron was better? First stint in Cleveland. Okay. The Miami stint. Right. The I'm, second I'm stint in Cleveland. I, I got Cleveland the second, because in those three games to start off that series. He averaged 41, 12, and 8 against the Golden State Warriors who looked invincible yes. coming into the series. 41, 12, and 8. Now, he did fail in game four because he had him down two games to one in his house. And the Iguodala insertion by Steve Curran to the starting lineup changed the whole series because Iggy did a pretty good number on LeBron because yeah. LeBron did not play well in that game. And Iggy did play well yes. on the offensive end. And all of a sudden, the script flipped. Right. So the point is, I still give him those three games because I've never seen anything like it because he didn't have Kevin Love, and then right away in the overtime of game one, he lost Kyrie. So he's basically just putting Delhi on his back and for those mm -hmm. three games going 41, 12, and 8. And then we do have to give him, I have to give him credit for 2016, the comeback. Obviously, there was no Draymond for game five, and Steph went completely a wall in games, uh, what would it be, uh, five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. But the point is, LeBron did do that. He had some help from Kyrie, but 